In this video we're going to take a look at the third section of the Python AppSec category on the Veracode Security Labs Community Edition and this lab is called HTTP Header Injection Perform a HTTP Header Injection Attack and Find Out the Fix So it's worth 10 points again, let's click Start and Begin So as in the previous labs, I'm not going to read through the entire blocks of text If you are doing these labs, you can do that yourself and they're free to sign up for so there's no reason not to do that I'm just going to try and pick out whatever's important or summarize key information that we'll actually need to complete the lab. So what's important to us here is that HTTP makes use of a request and response model with well-defined structures for both types of messages. The end user or client makes a request using one format and using a similar format responds with co the server responds with content based on the resource requested. So here's an example of a basic HTTP request and it's requesting the index document, the home directory of a server and the host of, of myserver.com, that's the host and then it gets this response back saying 200, so this is res the response code to say okay we were able to retrieve the resources from this host myserver.com and using this HTTP protocol. So this information can be thought of as metadata for the request and response and provides some key information for the client about the content and request. The application we'll be using in this lesson should boot up automatically, which it looks like it has. If not, you can type boot. So let's go and take a copy of this address and take a look at the application. We've got this vulnerable application. Doesn't seem to be much to it. We can view the source and yep, not too much there. We have this vulnerable example. Let's hit, let's click on that and it asks us to please provide a username. Okay, what if we say username is equal to crypto and it comes back hello crypto. So that was still a get request. We don't have any burp proxy or anything running so we can't actually see what's going on too easily behind the scenes or oh, well we could use our developer tools to do some of the similar stuff but um, that's fine. Let's move on to the next section and see what we're being asked to do. So before we look at what HTTP header injection is we need to look at how the headers are used. So it lists some potential headers here, some common headers that you might see, host, cookie, authorization, location, and it has a full listing, a link to the full listing of the HTTP headers in the Mozilla documentation. So you can go and have a look at all the headers that are available and what they should contain. And what it notes is that many HTTP headers can include a piece of user content. So headers like the cookie and user agent header can um, take in a user input which can then be used in the output so this creates potential for a vulnerabil vulnerability like we see in many other areas of web applications. So HTTP injection happens when unfiltered and unvalidated user input is allowed into the HTTP header response information. This allows the user to input any values directly into the response allowing them to directly control what is sent back to the user. So some p possible uses for this exploit we could redirect a user to another location using this location header we could change or set cookie values using this cookie header. We could change custom headers to bypass other security controls, truncate response data by modifying the content length, disable XSS protection, spoofing forwarded four headers used by many proxies. So there's um, some really good labs on the Burps Web Security Academy for some of this stuff. Web Security Academy, I actually remember let me see is the HTTP injection command uh, HTTP request smuggling that was it so I just noticed that it mentioned there about the truncating response data by modifying the content length and I remember there was some good labs on Portswigger about HTTP request smuggling which was looking at exactly that so you can see here the content length and the use of this transfer encoding so there can be a mix, mix match between what is used on the server side and what's used on the client side and based on what's supplied it can cause some some issues so it's quite a complex topic um, go and check it out if you're interested in if you enjoy this HTTP header injection lab you'll probably enjoy that as well so is it asking us to do anything here I don't think it is it says with a wide range of HTTP headers available, there's too many exploits out there. But from these examples, you can get an idea of how dangerous it could be. Okay, cool. So let's move on to the next section, see what we've got to do. 
Okay, so now we've got on to the actual exploiting the HTTP headers, and it says here they've set up a vulnerable script based on a Python Flask framework that makes it easy to handle incoming HTTP requests and send back appropriate responses. It tells us to go to this address, we already actually did that anyway, and it says that you'll get an error, which we did. It said that the username was missing, so we supplied the username as a get parameter using this question mark to indicate the key and then the equals and the value. And it's telling us to look at the HTTP headers of the response. So you can either use curl or the developer tools in the browser. So I had mentioned that previously as well. If we go to our developer tools, let's reload and we'll see. Let's make this a little bit bigger. We can see that this request is made vulnerable. Username equals crypto. And then if we take a look here, we can have a look at the request. No parameters for this request. Okay, we can have a look at the response. Response was hello crypto. What we're interested in is these HTTP headers. So there was the request headers right here, and then we have our response headers. And if we go back here, it tells us to that what we'll notice is that the response header has this X username header set with the value that we provided. This is another hint that there might be something that can be abused here. So let's go and check that out. You can see, yep, we've got this X username parameter uh, header with a value crypto, and that's been set based on the get parameter that we've used. So, what they're suggesting is that in order to exploit this, we might be able to inject a custom header, a new header, or um, replace an existing header. So, it says here HTTP headers make use of new lines to separate them in order to perform injections. So we need to figure out how to get a new line into that user input. Since the username value is on the URL, we need to URL encode the new line to um, percentage 0a. This will inject the new line after the username so that we can trick the browser into expl into injecting the new header value. Visit this URL and see what happens. Okay, all right, let's do that first of all. If we visit that, we see that so the username was provided as the test, and then we have this percentage 0. A, which is going to be a new line, and then there's this header key x exploited and the value 123. And if we go and have a look at our response headers, we'll see that not only do we have this x username value set, but we also have the x exploited header set. And it's also not set the username correctly there, uh, but it showed the uh, yeah, it showed exploited there. Okay, so. That gives an example. We can find very easily online URL encoders and decoders to convert those. We can do it in Python to, if we wanted to find the new line. So, if we go and decode this, actually, let's take the. Does it? Um, okay, it actually doesn't show the encoded version here. But if we go here and say percentage 0a decode that doesn't show anything because it's just a new line but um, yeah we could um, do this in between something else we could say hello and then crypto percentage 0a decode and you'll see that it's creating those new lines there all right, cool. So we've we've got we've tested that out. Let's move on to the next section. So now we're looking at fixing the exploit. So it says up until now we've been testing this externally to locate the vulnerability, but now we need to go into the code and see exactly where the flaw is and how we can fix it. So I suggest we can open this up in Pico. We can also just go and have a look at the code editor and look for our vulnerable endpoint. So we have this endpoint right here, this app.root and it's going to take in a username if a username is not provided in as a get as a get parameter it's going to return to say you need to provide a valid username if the username is provided it's going to check to see if there's a new line or a return feed in there and if there is it's going to respond to say that it's been exploited otherwise it will it will give us our username so it suggests here that there's a simple fix which would be to remove any new line or return feed characters but there's a more correct way to do it so it says here that flask already has a way of setting headers using the response dot headers this goes through a set of checks to make sure invalid content isn't present in the string automatically so we want to use this rather than rolling out our own for consistency and also because rolling out your own implementations of things like this is there's a high chance that you'll introduce 
new vulnerabilities and so we can replace the current content with the following so it has this secure version of this code let's take a copy of it and replace our vulnerable app root it's quite a bit shorter as well let's save that and it wants us to test this out again so if we go back to this page and run that again we'll say that we've it'll say that we've got an, an error let's see if we can just put in test okay yeah so it comes up with an error as soon as we put in our new line if we don't have a new line there it'll come back successfully let's have a look as well at our header so we can see that it set our username to test and then again if we do this with the percentage 0a we send that off and we get this response 500 internal server error and it hasn't set the header with the exploit with the exploit or oh, we didn't add the exploit there anyway but it hasn't set the username header it's just rejected the request cool so let's go on to the next section so we've got to this final wrap up section it gives us a summary of what we've been through we've learned what HTTP headers are and how they can be exploited and says that in most languages the HTTP headers are passed in a last in wins only allowing for one value that means if you had an X XSS protection header that enforces browser-based XSS protection and overwrote it with XSS protection 0 an XSS issue on the page might suddenly work so if you had two of these headers and the first one has the value of 1 and the second one has a value of 0 then it's basically saying that that will take precedence so to wrap up here's a few general recommendations when it comes to dynamic HTTP headers in your application never use user input as part of a header if possible always opt for using built-in tooling from your from your framework or library rather than rolling your own so that's generally the case with most security issues and if you do it, do do it manually ensure that any user input is stripped of new line characters and that's it we've completed this lab so I hope you've enjoyed this video in the next one we will move on to JSON injection